So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at playing Amiga and Amiga CD32 games on the Anbernic RG351P. It's not quite so straightforward like a lot of the other um, sort of software on here, but it is possible. All you really need is the right name and uh, sort of, of your files and the, the right kickstart files in each of the right folders. Sounds simple, but it's not as simple as you might think. Let's have a look. So once you have all the kickstarts in the right folder, games in the right place, etc, all the names right, so let's have a look at them. I've got a few games in the, the Commodore Amiga uh, folder. So as some of the games with multiple discs are a little bit more trickier to get started. Um, the games do take a little bit longer to, to load. Um, let's have a little look at Speedball 2. So Speedball 2 is probably one of the original amazing games on the Amiga. It's probably the best version out there. There's lots of versions of this. Probably not the quickest version, but probably the best graphically and um, how it plays. So, okay, sometimes when you're sort of loading the game, you need to maybe press some of the buttons. I, I got the game to actually go by pressing the top R2 and L2 button together. It's something that just gets stuck in the sort of initial loading screens. Just certainly worth paying attention to is maybe press some of the buttons to get it to, to go. It's a, at times it does seem to get stuck, but it definitely does work. The loading times are maybe maybe somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute to actually load the game in. And you can see it definitely does work. You need to maybe change the default size of the screen. is is quite small and it doesn't actually fill the entire screen, but you can change that by holding the select button and X and you can go in here and, and make the necessary changes that you want to do. Using the retro arc, and but for now, oh, no, it's just the on-screen keyboard which you just press select. So let's actually play uh, speedball. Here we go. Let's get stuck into a game. And see, it looks really good. Sounds great. Um, kind of tricky still to play, <laughs> but it's worked really well. You can actually use the analog stick as well to control uh, the, the characters, which is great. It is a brilliant little game, I'm not, obviously it's quite difficult to concentrate on doing the video and this at the same time, but uh, absolute top game, brilliant game. So let's maybe have another look at another game, so to escape from here you really just press the start and select button a few times together. It's quite a tricky platform but uh, quite fun. It's obviously made by the same people that done Speedball, but let's move that on a little bit and get to the game. So here we go. It's working perfectly well. You sort of push up to jump. You can change the controls as you see wish, but you can see, and, and the, obviously the size of the screen you could change. You see, it looks great, works really well. Um, brilliant, I love it. So let's have a look at uh, Amiga CD32 games. Much the same way, apart from the, the actual loading times are a lot quicker, which is why I was quite interested in sort of getting that working on the, the machine. And it, it just is a matter of having the right kickstart files in the right folder on the Amiga CD32. So let's go back to the main menu and have a look at that. 
So back to the main menu, we can see we've got the Amiga CD32 folder. Um, I've got a few games loaded in here, so I need to tidy up the names a little bit. Um, best with the Akira is it's just one CD, whereas if you're playing on the original Amiga, it's about three discs, which can be a bit of a pain to swap. Um, we've got Alien Breed, a few different versions of that. We've got Beneath the Steel Sky, which is quite cool. Doesn't run amazingly well, um, but it's, it does run. Chuck Rock, IK Plus, which is probably one of the best versions on here, Soccer Kid, um, and Zool. Let's have a look at Zool, obviously one of the most iconic Amiga games as well. The, the games do um, load, oh, it makes that funny noise, there. it's really just checking your kickstart files. Um, if you have an error, you may get a screen pop up here before this, but as you can see, I've got the files in the right folders, and it's good to go. So the button layout is slightly different for the CD32, so you need to be aware of that, but it, it worked really, really well. You can see this is uh, Zool, which is fantastic, and you see there's no slowdown, and it, it runs amazingly well, and looks really good as well, doesn't it? And there's lots of different versions of this, but these are the original versions on the Amiga. I think it was sort of trying to compete with the sort of Sonic Super Mario thing. Definitely a Sonic sort of wannabe, but oh wow, it's a really good game in its own right. Tricky though, very tricky. But a great little game. Let's have a look at some more games. So, maybe let's have a look at... Um, let's see, will we have a look at Alien Breed? And what, definitely one of the reasons why I like about the CD32 is the loading times are... Miles faster. This is a cool little game. There's lots of different versions of Alien Breed. And I've got the 3D version as well, but it's, it doesn't work quite as well. This is like an alien style, alien style game. <laughs> it looks a bit like a kind of commando top down style. Look at all these, you can probably barely see them on screen. They're sort of like face huggers almost. But yeah, it works really well. As you can see, it, it sounds great. It works really well. And the other thing with the CD32 games is the it defaults and fills the screen, which is fantastic. Terrific little game this. And I'm really surprised how amazingly well this actually runs on, on this uh, little machine. So let's have a look at one more game and then we'll call the video quits. So see Beneath Steel Sky does run. Um, all these games do actually run. Um, I've got the Soccer Kid different versions here. And this is the CD version. It's more or less the same game, it just really runs a little bit quicker. Nothing amazingly different. So I, th I would really would have loved to have had an Amiga CD32 back in the day, because I thought it looked a really cool machine. Just didn't have a chance right enough against some of the other competitors. But it looks really nice. Soccer Kid's been adapted to so many different um, sort of formats. You see that the sound's a little bit off in, in Soccer Kid. And it runs a little bit slow. Which is kind of strange because all the other games run really well, but this one probably runs a little bit slow. You see the sound's just a little bit off. Um, but I actually think some of the, the SNES versions probably better. There was a a Jagger version as well, which was great, but unfortunately the Jagger doesn't work great on here. It's the slowdown's pretty poor. It says a little bit of slowdown on this too. Which is surprising considering the other games, but it still runs, it runs quite well considering. Okay guys, thanks for watching the video today. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.